Hello and welcome back to the lab. Today on the bench we have a industrial power supply of questionable origins. These industrial power supplies, if you've ever had to work on them, they are designed to just run and run and run and run and run. Uh, and they come in two vastly different flavors. Uh, extremely expensive and will run forever. Or super cheap. We are dealing with option two today on the bench. This is a power supply that was absolutely built to a price, which we'll find out when I take the covers off. 4K might be doing this justice. Might be able to tell what's wrong with it already. Uh, when it was in situ, uh, when it was in situ, the um, power supply was pulsing, so it was trying to start, but it was falling off and wasn't staying running. So, um, looking through the vents. I can already tell what's wrong and what we're going to have to do to fix this and get this repaired. And at the same time, give it an upgrade. So let me get the covers off. We'll take a look, and I'm pretty sure I know what we're going to find. About being built to a price, some of the film was left on one of the heat sinks. Yeah, there's a component bolted to that. So absolutely built to a price. We are on the cheap, we are on the inexpensive side of the fence on this one. Ah, uh, yes. So, the, w the more you look at it, the worse it gets. We will have to take that out. Must I guess we just voided the warranty. Um, typically, a power supply like this, I would just replace it. Usually, I would not actually go through the trouble of fixing one of these. The problem is what this thing powers. This is a customer unit, so I can't say exactly what it powers. But what this powers is absolutely critical. And they need it up and running, and they need it up and running tomorrow, which is why it's found its way to my bench. And as we expected, output filters are gone. We'll have to replace the output filters in the power supply. Not a huge deal. We got some in stock. That is not a problem. I'm going to have to get these active components off the heat sink to get this board out of here. So this clamp's going to have to come off. That clamp's going to have to come off. Then we'll be able to get the power supply board out of here and get this worked on. All right, I've got the actives taken apart, and the whole thing slides out this way. We'll uh, take care of some of this for sure. Nothing like insulation where you'd want a grounded chassis, right? Um... There's the bottom side. Not too terrible on the bottom. A little bit of isolation slots. That's the input filters, yeah. So um, this is actually a really good example of simple switch mode power supply design. Input uh, Input's actually here. We have a bit of isolation. Slots cut in, so primary would be on this side. Switching regulator, or er, switching filters Bridge rectifier, bulk filter. My guess is, yeah, this is probably the switching element, drives that transformer. We have output filters. These are probably regulators, would be my guess. Photo, photo, uh, photo optic feedback to control the switching to get some regulation. And here is a the just output regulator adjustment. So very, very simple power supply. Pretty easy to work on. Don't even need a schematic. Um, most of the stuff's still good. I am in a 120 volt section of the world, so typically on mine, the bulk filter caps never go bad. If you are in a 240 volt section of the world, you will see far more stress on the bulk filters than I do because your voltage is about 2x. Uh, this is actually a pretty beefy switching transformer for a supply this big. Not sure what it's rated for current wise, but this is definitely a how much current can I squeeze out of this supply, which is why the bulk filters took such a beating and failed. Uh, this is a 10 amp supply based on the model number. So this will do 12 volts at 10 amps and theoretically should do 12 volts at 10 amps all day long uh, and has for quite some time. It's just it's in need of some service. So I got the irons heated up. We're going to use some N2 soldering and desolder tool, pop all these out, put new caps in, and uh, go from there. Voltage-wise, they're not bad. It's a 12-volt supply. They're 25-volt caps. Uh, 220 mic and 1,000 mic. 
no, um, two twenties and thousand mic caps. They are who made these? KT and yeah, KT brand capacitors. No idea. They're gonna get some Rubicons or Nippon Chemicons or whatever I happen to have in stock because need it tomorrow. All right, so we got to do a little bit of circuit design and engineering here because I don't have values that'll fit. I have capacitors that'll fit in this position, but the lid won't close. So what can we do to make this right and get this ready to go? Well, turns out if we look, these capacitors are actually all in parallel. So the first one was here, second one was here, direct up. Third one was here. This is a choke, and the fourth one was here. So we have 4,700 microfarads of capacitance right here. We run through a probably a current limiting choke in this position, and then we have another 1,000 microfarads of filtering right before we hit the output. So we have 4,500 mic, current limit, another 1,000 mic, and out. So what I'm thinking we do is we add a little bit of capacitance. We go with four 1,500 microfarad capacitors, if they will fit physically, because they're short enough. And we do that, which would actually give me 500 microfarads more filtering than was there before. And I get a rating, or a voltage rating increase as well due to the fact that these are 35 volt caps as opposed to 25 volt caps. So we should get some more longevity out of them. They're uh, also not KT brand. They're nice Rubicons from a proper source. So we know they are not counterfeit. As weird as it sounds, yes, people do counterfeit capacitors. It's actually pretty bad out there. And these also got hot. Board's been discolored a little bit because of how warm these caps got. Oh yeah, we'll fit physically. Nice. Well done. They will fit just fine. All right, I'll get the other ones in, and then we'll do some soldering. All right, soldering under the hood with a little bit of N2. The N2 iron is absolutely overkill for this. Uh, one of the main reasons I use the N2 iron is actually for tech ceramic strips, for those that are new to the channel. But um, it works, and it makes the solder behave better, especially if you have to deal with um, lead-free solder. The N2 actually does really make the lead free solder behave. Also, for those that have worked on this stuff before, transistor paste is like uh, any C's if you ever work on cars, it gets everywhere. I don't like this joint right here. There we go. Oh no, the leaded and lead free solder is reacting with each other. That's what's going on there. <laughs> All right, we're all back together and heat sunk, sort of. I mean, yeah, it works, but I'd, I'd like some more fins, some more dissipation. Here's our additional capacitors. I need to go make up a very questionable power cord. Uh, put some forks on a uh, 110 line, get them hooked up here, and uh, put the covers back on. And uh, as always, I'm going to throw this on a load tester, and this is going to get loaded for a while on my Keithley 2380 just to make sure it will put out its 12 volts at 10 amps and do so for quite some time. Okay, we're all put back together. There are things about this setup that are less than stellar, but it'll work for testing and it's only for testing. So if you're doing, if you're following along, you're doing so at your own risk. And if you know what I did wrong, let me know in the comments. 
All right. No smoke and a green light. So that's good. Move you guys up to the load. Power supply is outputting 12.449 volts. That's not bad. I have asked for 10 amps. Currently drawing 0.01, which is fine. Ask it for power. 11.72, it's delivering power. Okay, real answer now is let it sit here and cook. I'm going to do a thermal analysis on it, so I'll cover it with a, or I'll hit it with a thermal camera. It's already getting a little warm, but that's okay. I'm actually asking a lot of it. I'm drawing 10 amps out of it, which is its rated current, and it's still holding a voltage of 11.71, so I believe we have fixed the supply. So I tweaked the control a little bit to see if I could boost the loaded voltage I could, but when I took the load off, it dropped, it, it went all the way up to about 13 volts, which is running a little hot for the devices that are plugged into this thing. So what I want to do is I, I kind of balance that. So unloaded, it's sitting at 12.5. Loaded, it's 11.71. So call it a 800 millivolt drop when you pull, when you ask the supply to deliver 10 amps. All right, through the magic of the camera, now is later, and the burn-in testing has survived. Everything's been good to go. So it's ready to get this back in its enclosure so I can re-deliver it to my customers tomorrow. Thanks for stopping by the lab and taking a look at the repairing sketchy power supplies video. If you like what you're seeing, hang around. Hit all the YouTube buttons, like, share, and subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel, check out the YouTube memberships and or the Patreon page. Both are both have the same contents and are running ahead on the releases for YouTube. Their help helps me keep the lights on here in the lab and videos coming up to YouTube, and for that I am eternally grateful. As always, more is on the way, and I'll see everybody in the comments between videos. Bye for now.